These are the biggest mistakes I've made along my journey, graduating from high school 14 years ago to now in a six-figure tech job. Everything that in hindsight, if I could talk to my younger self before making these mistakes, I'd gently advise not to do them and swiftly kick myself in the balls. <laughs> while yelling profanities because I'd probably be too stubborn to listen. Let's begin back when I was handed my high school diploma. First mistake was not kicking myself in the ball. I took time off to figure out myself. Now this might just be the most controversial point I make, but let me clarify. Taking some time off to actively try and figure out what the actual fuck you want out of life is not the same as what I did. 18 months of this and this. No serious thought was given to my future. My dreams, my goals. My wife. I didn't research much. I barely knew what a corporate job was, honestly. All I knew about jobs is what I had seen up till then, living in some podunk town where I was exposed to blue collar retail and fast food workers. Honestly, if I could recall, one of my biggest priorities at the time was getting a girlfriend. And the best that I could come up with after a year out of high school was enrolling in a community college. Late, I missed the fall deadline. Now I should have started pursuing certifications right off the bat after researching what jobs were like and what I was most interested in, or at the very least started community college right out of high school. Absolutely no reason to pass over free community college with financial aid that I knew that I qualified for because my parents were broke. Just so I was doing something while I tried to figure it out. I should have just started something instead of doing nothing and not ultimately just wasting my time. Likely part of the reason it took me so long to make a decision was being overwhelmed by all the options available and my lack of understanding of the real world, both of which stemmed from me asking the wrong questions. I just lived a simple sheltered life, eating borscht and playing video games. I was asking myself what I wanted out of life, broadly speaking. I wanted what most people at any point in time want, Money, but not just money, an easy six-figure salary. But I didn't put in the time to actually look up how corporate jobs or any six-figure salary job works. Why did those jobs pay so much? If only I had watched Simon Sinex, not to be confused with Sam Sulek, famous TED Talk that introduced to the world the golden circle theory. Put simply, the theory helps in understanding why we do what we do. Everything from business to leadership to all basic human decision-making. Mistake number two, focusing on the what and not the how or why. And I was here living in the what, but I sure as hell did not give enough thought to the how or why. People are paid a $100,000 salary. That's the what. How are they paid that much? They work for businesses that can pay them that much. Why do they get paid so much? Because they have expertise to aid in providing a product or a service that the business offers. That then in turn makes money for the business. This is of course the business model. Quite simple really, but within the business model, we have the employee model. The what in this model that I didn't have the faintest clue about at the time was the expertise that the business is looking for. Now, how do I get this expertise? Well, these days I would say certifications, but the more I reminisce about how my dumb ass thought at the time, I wonder if I could actually convince myself to buckle down and self-learn through certifications. You can get the necessary expertise through certifications, college, and of course, job experience. But you need experience to get a job, and you need a job to get experience. And why do I want to learn this specific expertise? To make money. We've come full circle. All of our whys lead to money. Now, I might have fully misinterpreted Sam's model, but it makes sense to me. This leads to my complete and utter lack of understanding of what any job in tech truly entails. This led me into going towards a path that was not right for me. Because again, I don't know how, and I didn't put in the time to understand how any of these tech jobs work. After putting together a basic HTML Hello World web page in my computer class in my senior year of high school, and having excelled in science and math my whole life, I was almost positive I wanted to do something with computers. And being amazed by how my friend put together a basic game, much like Zelda, on the computer, which made me think that someday I could be a part of working on, oh, I don't know, World of Warcraft game development, I thought that I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Computer science. If you ask me what jobs I could get with the degree in computer science? Well, I probably couldn't answer that question, much less tell you what the people in the actual jobs do on a day-to-day -day basis. I might have guessed and said something like, well, they just program all day, right? Duh. But what do they program? How much do you need to know to be able to program or code like all of these software engineers? A lot. I guess you could say that my refusal to put in the time to even attempt to figure out what I needed to know to get a job with a computer science degree left me a naive fool. This led me into my third mistake, assuming that college was enough. And you know what assuming does, right? 
I had this misguided, ill-found notion that all I needed was this piece of paper. I didn't consider the strenuous hours of debugging code, the fundamental knowledge of code that you need to even properly comprehend how to debug code, which caused me to take 10 times the amount of time learning the basics. My homework assignments sucked the life out of me. And I certainly didn't consider the state of the computer science job market. And maybe in some ways, high schools are to blame for not adequately preparing us for the next steps in life. But most, if not all, of the blame I would put on myself. I had access to Google and could research if I wanted to guess I didn't feel I needed to either way quickly into my computer science degree I quit twice maybe you could call it failing but more so I failed myself I could have spent most or all of my day studying for my coding classes but the interest just wasn't there so naturally choosing video games was an easy choice for me to make a stupid choice maybe that's the biggest mistake of all being stupid and again I made the mistake of taking more time off and really doing nothing with my time off leading me into mistake number four don't be stupid I chose the wrong path because I went about it in a stupid way I like computers you should code okay no. That was me. Once I found out about the cybersecurity degree and entering the program about eight years after graduating high school, by then I had somewhat pulled my head out of my ass and stopped playing video games nearly as much. Goodbye, my friend. You have been the one. You have been the one for me. But in hindsight, coding was never right for me. And I could have figured that out sooner had I just looked into a few coding classes much, much earlier. Instead of going through college filler classes, thinking that once I hit those upper level coding classes, that the stars would align and I'd finally be on my way to a sweet six figure coding job. And all the while I spent in college during those eight years, the cybersecurity program was just sitting there waiting for me. And this is all to say, make sure without a shadow of a doubt, you're the most interested in cybersecurity or computer science or a network engineer or a system administrator, whatever the position, before you devote the necessary blood, sweat, and late night tears on it. Now, even once I graduated and having loved most of my cybersecurity classes, I still put in the bare minimum to complete my assignments and pass all my exams. And I was never really at risk of failing any of my classes, but I was about to face the stark reality of the job market. <laughs> reality being that my piece of paper was not enough to easily land a job in cybersecurity. Now I emphasize easily doable, but oh. because again, I had no clue what expertise to showcase in my resume. And I thought that I'd have multiple job offers right off the bat to pretty much any job I wanted. Maybe this is in part due to how my college professors were amping us up for how high the demand is. He lied to me. But still, I couldn't blame others for my own incompetence. I needed to do a lot more with my time that I had spent in college. Networking, studying, building projects, collecting certificates, everything possible to give me an edge going into the cybersecurity job market. Now I was able to land a tech support job relatively quickly with my degree. Once I started applying to jobs after my e-commerce business failed, the business failing was unrelated to my cybersecurity mistakes. <laughs> and I was able to land a tier one technician job towards the end of my junior year in the program, which meant that I could have landed a job in IT much sooner. Mistake number five, not getting an IT job sooner. Why didn't I? I don't know. Yes, I've said you don't need an IT or help desk job to get into cybersecurity, but I spent nearly eight years doing blue collar and retail work that could have been in IT if I had just gotten the A plus and applied to oodles of places. Back then the A plus I imagine was more impressive than it is now, probably, I don't know. Point being, there was no reason for me not to pursue any help desk positions back then. While I studied up for computer science or cybersecurity or what have you. Does not matter what age you are, stop wasting your life. And if I had just seen this video right out of high school, then I might have been a millionaire by now. Probably. I don't know. I